Today, I want to talk about how a clockmaker in the 17th century would have made most gears and how you can construct a um, 60 hole indexing plate from scratch with primitive tools. The uh, thing we're going to discuss is this right here, a 60 hole, actually 62 hole indexing plate. This uh, sufficed for almost all of the gears that the uh, person in the 17th and 18th century wanted to, to do. We'll cover the manufacture of one of these and show why even though out here it's not accurate to modern standards for the most part, down here it will be. Okay, we have a plate. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get the center of the plate approximately. This will be our reference dot, if you will. circle now we know where to put our clamps and at this point the only important precision thing is this dot right here working around that circle a lot. Make sure everything's good and tight. up again. Now we're going to make a little reference dot. This will be the the most accurate dot on the uh, thing. And I think we'll put it right here. We can use our loop. to make sure we're on the line. And there's a little dot. If you didn't have a loop, you can slide along the groove until you feel that then you know you're on the dot. And there's another dot. We'll go on around this until we have all six. Well, so now the evidence that we did a good job with our six is if we can drop into the dot on the sixth one, which is right there, and drop into the dot on the first one, which is right there. That 
means that these, all six of these, are as precise, probably right up to modern standards, I would say. Uh, there's probably not more than a thousandth of an inch difference at all. So now if we make errors on any of these in here, they'll be in reference to the local dot which will bring, which means the error will be distributed all the way around instead of if we were to start making little marks all the way around, the error would total by the time we got to the end. Might be all right for some purposes, but we're trying to make an accurate plate here. All right, so the next thing, we want 60 holes. So we're going to bisect this giving us 12, and then do what they call the quintus section, giving us 5. Okay, I've gotten the bisections done. I made a rough pencil bisection right here, and then went from here to here, and here to here, until I got, got it exactly right. Whenever I saw the error up here, I would adjust the screw for half the error and then start over. And now you can see it drops right into that dot and drops right into that dot all the way around. Uh, this beam compass will not be shortenable enough, I think, to do five in here, so I'll have to go to another compass. Now we have our divider set. We can test it. And we're a little tiny bit short of the dot. So what we do, we move it the tiniest little bit here. Pretty close. Okay. There is about as good as I'm going to get. So we'll make the final marks We're right on. Okay, now we can we can make the rest of the marks. Now, um, at this point, we can start we can start going around. Any error in these will be distributed around the circle. So even if there's a couple thousandths of an inch, and remember, if I'm off by a hundredth of an inch here, a little gear down here will be off by a thousandth. So there you have it. We have uh, holes that have been put in there, center punched as accurately as I can manage. A center there, there'll be some sawing right here, and a drilling of 61 holes. Um, it might have taken a uh, 17th century maker a, a couple of days to make this. It took me, I guess, a couple of hours. And we'll drill it out and uh, perhaps we'll be able to make some tests.
Okay, here's the uh, finished product. The precision was pretty good until the drilling and reaming stage when it got um, off by as much as 30 thousandths of an inch. Um, that's not at all impossible. Still, a gear of three or three thousandths of an inch or less would be quite functional and could be run in very easily. So that's that's the whole thing there. I hope you enjoyed this look at the 16th and 17th centuries clock making systems. Thank you.